Okay, so part two. You know, you're gonna have these things that come up, and for all of us, it's gonna be something different. It could be work, it could be kids, it could be, you know, something as far as like family celebrations. That's a big thing. Family celebrations, birthday parties, office parties. I used to work in an office where they were constantly bringing in, you know, not, it was someone's birthday. And then they'd be like, great, let's bring in chips and, you know, chips, cookies, cakes, and everybody bring, and that was like every other day because I worked at a huge organization and it was always someone's birthday. So every day there was literally like old country buffet there for the taking in between all your meals. Um, if you work in a place like that, you're going to have to figure out a way to deal with that. There's no magic answer, but you're going to have to be like, okay, you know what? Every day I go into work and I'm going to have these temptations. And figure out a conversation to have your, with yourself when that comes up. Understand that people are going to constantly go, come on, Karen, just have it. It's just a piece of cake. And have something ready in your mind. And, that, and to say to people like that, to say to haters like that that are probably... You know, and say, look, you know what? I'm really happy what I'm doing. I'm watching my weight. I'm feeling better every day. And if I if I eat that, it's going to get me off track. So I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't really offer it to me. Whatever it is, you know, for me, what I have to deal with are like internal conversations. Yeah, I'm going to admit I talk to myself because um, if you get into a snowball effect where you skipped a few workouts, it's very very easy to get into that lazy mindset where the next day, say you haven't worked out in two days, okay? And then that next day you go to work out and you're going to get your clothes on, your workout clothes on. I don't know about you guys, but I'll automatically, and, and it's not it's not like in my nature, but automatically that next day I'm like, oh, I am so tired. I totally don't feel like working out. Maybe I'll just take one more day, I'll make up for the rest of the week. And I have to like be ready for that because when it when that kind of voice inside of my head comes in, I've got to really start talking back to it and say, you know what? Okay, yeah, I'm tired. Yeah, this is a pain. But if I keep doing that and I keep doing that every week, pretty soon it's like anything. Time flies, people. And it's not just when you're having fun. Time flies when we're busy. And the more that you give in to stuff like that, that's when something can happen to you like it happened to me. Where last year, you know, I had so many medical nightmares and, and my health was up and down and up and down. And long story short, like I said, I take responsibility for this, but I kept giving in. I kept giving in to, I feel like crap, you know, my, my shoulders and my back are stinging and this medicine hurts and I'm tired and I, and I wouldn't work out. And then guess what? The next day I wouldn't work out. And then the next day I wouldn't work out. And then the weekend, you know, and, and it was, I had valid medical, um, a, a medical condition. I had valid um, moments of pain. So I'm not saying like, on, on one hand I had um, kind of a valid excuse, if you will, a, a lot of the time, but a lot of the times I was just giving in because I was upset and I was depressed about what was going on and that I couldn't control it. And I was using that as an excuse to feel bad and feel down. And what happens is you're not keeping track. You're not realizing that, wow, you know, all of February I only worked out four times. And if you're not doing your little calendar, like I've told you guys, that visual representation of where you are, you kind of forget. It's kind of like calories. If you're not tracking what you're doing, you're like, yeah, I, I know I worked out. Yeah, I'm sure I did. But guess what? If you're not writing it down, and then you go back and you really think about each week. That's what happened to me last year. I was like, okay, wait, I went on that trip. And when I was there in New York, I didn't, I worked out once. And then that following week I was here. Oh, and that weekend I didn't work out. And then you start, and that happened to me a lot last year. And then I started looking back over the year. This was like in the fall last year. And I was like, oh my gosh, this year I have been so bad, so inconsistent. I haven't been tracking anything, I wasn't tracking my eating, thought I was eating healthy, thought I was working out, but the more that I really look back and evaluate it, here's what I thought I was doing and I was down here. So I thought I was doing this, I thought my results should be here, and I was really doing this and my results were here. So again, if you're not in charge, if you fail to plan, plan to fail. And I look back at last year and I've told you guys this before, it's just, I'm writing it off. And that pisses me off. Who wants to look back on a year and say, I gotta just write it off? I could have made, look at what I wasted. I could have made a year's worth of progress, but instead I have a year where I'm almost taking, you know, instead of two steps forward, I took three steps back, in my opinion, and I'm starting over. But you know what? Sometimes bad things like that happen for a reason, and that makes you better and stronger and faster and more kick ass and ready to. Ah! So, what I, 
what was the point I was making? Making a lot of points and they're all overlapping. But you have to understand what's going to come in your way and be ready to deal with it. Because this issue of motivation will happen to you all the time. Understand, you're going to be not motivated or you're not going to feel like it a lot. And that's where I think if you're reading my blog, you're reading other people's blogs, that's where this accountability factor is awesome, okay? That's why I started blogging, because I know I answer to all you guys out there, even you lurkers that don't leave comments. Love ya. Um, but everybody that's out there, there's this sense for me that, you know what, I'm reporting everything that I'm doing to all of you. And I've got people that are reporting to me. And you know what? There's certain people where if I see, you know, hey, what's going on? I'm going to check in on them. Sherry and I have been blogger friends, friends from across the ways for like 10 or 15 years. And let me tell you, she's my number one source. When I start to get down and I want to eat like two dozen Oreos, of course, I wouldn't eat that now because they're not gluten free. But, you know, when I want to bury my head in like 3,000 caramels from Trader Joe's, because they're not, they are gluten free. I'm going to text Sherry and I'm going to tell her how depressed I am and she and I will go back and forth and text each other or get on the phone and we'll talk each other out of it. Sometimes I'll still go ahead and have something, but I'm going to tell her and then the next day she's going to be like, what are you doing? Are you working out? Get an accountability partner. If you haven't started a blog, start a blog. It's changed my life. I've met so many amazing people and that accountability factor is huge. Knowing that you've got people that are going to support you, knowing that you've got people that have been where you've been and they've gotten past it, the advice and the counsel and just the feeling of like community, for lack of a better term, is killer. So understand that everything is in your power. Just start because motivation is going to happen later. Okay? I gotta look at my notes. Track your progress. Track what you're doing. You might think that you're not getting anywhere, and that can be one of those things that's gonna make you feel down and wanna give up, but if you're tracking your progress, and you're tracking the fact that, oh my gosh, you guys might have seen this the past couple of weeks. I do those Kathy's, Kathy HIIT workouts, HIT, she calls them HIT, I just, sounds funny to me. Each time I have had to stop, in the beginning, I had to like give myself an extra 10, 15 seconds in between the rest sets, right? Guess what, each time that, that amount of extra time I needed got less, and yesterday for the first time I did it with absolutely no extra time. That's progress, people. That's progress for me. Sometimes it means that you go up in your weights. If you're doing P90X, all of a sudden instead of using 12 pounds for this, um, you know, the shoulder press, you're using 15 or 20s or, or whatever. You do extra reps or you can do that bonus session. Whatever it is, track that. That, in addition to putting your clothes on and feeling less jiggle every time, or um, putting your workout clothes on and feeling like um, it's looser, you know, your bra straps aren't digging into your spine as much as they used to. Um, whatever it is, you're going to start noticing, and those are the things you've got to make a big deal out of, because the little things add up to big things, and you've got to like mentally focus on the, the positive as opposed to only focusing on the negative. Okay, and I'm very guilty of focusing only on the negative. Okay, but you've got to balance that out. My friend Amy's the one that really made made sure. She goes, when you look in the mirror, don't just sit there and go, I hate my thighs, or oh my God, I can't stand this tummy bulge. Look and talk about things that you like. You know, I have strong legs, I've got great calves, I love my arms, my delts are getting great. Talk about what's good, and you've got to do that, because if you're only talking down to yourself, it's going to be easier and easier to get on that slippery slope of just complete, I'm so down on myself, and why even bother? You've got to get away from so, start, track your process, progress, excuse me. Anticipate your roadblocks and understand that you're gonna have to have that conversation with yourself. You're gonna have to have that conversation with coworkers or family members. You're gonna have to go to sometimes a party and, and not in, indulge in everything that's around you because guess what? There's a birthday party or a holiday or some kind of work celebration every freaking week. And if you give in, you're gonna be like this big. So decide the person that you wanna be, decide how you're gonna get there, Understand that motivation, it's like a garden, and you've got to water it and, and kind of grow it every day, but it's your responsibility. You've got other people here in this blogosphere, in this social media sphere, that can help you, and I encourage you to reach out for it, but you've got to make it happen on your own. And you can. That's the great thing. You can. It's totally doable. Look at me. Oh! So I hope that was good. I hope that wasn't too long and I didn't bore you to tears, but... 